The following is an encore presentation of Everything Everywhere Daily. The Mona Lisa is unquestionably the most famous painting in the world. Heck, it's probably the most famous work of art in the world. Yet the reason why it's so famous is due to an event which happened on the 21st of August, 1911. If it wasn't for the events of that day, the Mona Lisa would probably just be another painting hanging on the walls of the Louvre. Find out what happened to make the Mona Lisa so famous in this episode of Everything Everywhere Daily. This episode is sponsored by ButcherBox. One of the things I like best about ButcherBox is figuring out all the different ways to prepare the products I get. Cooking a steak can be pretty straightforward, although I'm going to begin experimenting with the sous vide method of cooking, doing what's known as a reverse sear. It's supposedly the best way to cook a steak and a worthy method of preparation for the high quality steaks you get from ButcherBox. I also received some ground beef in my last shipment and made what I've called a meat donut. Instead of pressing the ground beef into patties, I molded it into the shape of a donut, fried it, and then I cooked an egg in the center of the donut. It was actually great. If you would like to try the meat donut, you are in luck because ButcherBox is now offering free ground beef for a year. Receive two pounds of ground beef for a year and get $20 off your first box when you sign up today at butcherbox.com daily and use code daily. Once again, that's butcherbox.com daily, promo code daily. This episode is sponsored by Inside Tracker. Everybody's body is different. There is no one-size-fits-all plan for everyone because everyone's needs are unique. Inside Tracker provides a comprehensive testing of your body's chemistry that goes far beyond what's provided in normal clinical blood work. Once they have the data, you'll then receive specific nutrition, exercise, supplement, and lifestyle recommendations, and you can, if you like, then share these with your doctor. And since May is Women's History Month, Inside Tracker is unveiling an upgraded ultimate plan that includes three new hormone markers that are critical to measure during a woman's reproductive and menopausal years. And because it's Women's Health Month, Inside Tracker is not charging for these three hormone markers in May. For a limited time, Everything Everywhere Daily listeners can get 20% off Inside Tracker's new ultimate plan, complete with estradiol, progesterone, and TSH. To sign up, visit InsideTracker.com slash EED. That's InsideTracker.com slash EED. The Mona Lisa is perhaps the greatest painting by the artist Leonardo da Vinci. There are only about 15 paintings by Leonardo which still exist, and there are debates as to the authenticity of several of them. The Mona Lisa, however, is unquestionably a Leonardo. The painting is of a noble woman from Florence named Lisa Giocondo. The term Mona Lisa just means the Lady Lisa in Italian. It is only known as the Mona Lisa in English. In Italian, it's known as La Gioconda, and in French, it's La Gioconde. The painting itself is an oil painting on poplar wood panels. Leonardo worked on the painting for years, taking it with him in the last years of his life when he went to work in the court of King Francis I in France. It is estimated that it was painted between 1503 and 1506, but there are estimates that he may have worked on it as long as 1517. The image is one of the best examples of his sfumato technique, which consists of very small brush strokes to create very soft transitions between colors without any harsh lines. It is undeniably his masterpiece. The Mona Lisa became the possession of King Francis upon the death of Leonardo and stayed in the Palace of Fontainebleau under the possession of the French crown until the French Revolution of 1797, when it was placed on display in the Louvre. It remains there until today, save for a brief period where it was hung in the bedroom of Napoleon. All of these things make the Mona Lisa a very significant painting, an important painting, and an interesting painting. But it doesn't explain why a portrait of an otherwise unknown woman from Italy is the most famous painting in the world. To understand that, we need to fast forward to August 21st, 1911. On that day, the Mona Lisa disappeared. It literally just vanished. It was hanging on the wall with several other paintings, and no one even noticed it was gone until the next day when it was discovered missing by the painter Louis Barad. There was a great deal of confusion at first. The museum thought that the painting might have been taken to get photographed. Eventually, they realized that the painting had in fact been stolen, and the blame was first pointed in the direction of modern artists. 
The first person taken into custody was the French poet Guillaume Apollinaire, who was a vocal critic of classic art. He was held for about a week and then pointed the finger at his friend Pablo Picasso. Eventually, both men were exonerated of the crime. All the borders to France were put on alert, and everyone going out of the country had their belongings searched. Ships were prevented from leaving port until the vessels were searched for the painting. The day after the theft, it was headline news around the world. Papers in Sao Paulo, New York, London, and Washington reported the news. In Paris, the papers expressed outrage at the loss of a national treasure. The French magazine La Illustration wrote, What audacious criminal, what mystifier, what manic collector, what insane lover has committed this abduction? They offered a reward of 40,000 francs, which works out to a bit under $1,000 today. Their competitor, the Paris Journal, then upped the reward to 50,000 francs. In the weeks after the theft, conspiracy theories as to who might have stolen it became popular pastimes in the media. Rewards and false leads began pouring in from all over the world. The Louvre remained closed for almost a month, and when it reopened, crowds of people lined up just to see the empty spot on the wall where the missing Mona Lisa used to hang. Some even left flowers in front of the empty spot on the wall as if they were honoring someone who had died. The trail went cold, and for two years, there were no leads in the case. In November 1913, an art dealer in Florence named Alfredo Gary received a letter from a man called Leonard, who claimed to have the Mona Lisa in his possession. He said he was an Italian who was suddenly seized with the desire to return his country to at least one of the many treasures which, especially in the Napoleonic era, had been stolen from Italy. It should be noted that Napoleon didn't steal the Mona Lisa. It had been in France since the death of da Vinci. Geary contacted the Uffizi Gallery and was given information about the back of the painting that no one else would know unless they had access to the actual Mona Lisa. After weeks of cat and mouse, Geary and the man named Leonard finally met in Florence where the painting was produced and Geary was able to authenticate it as the real Mona Lisa. The two took the painting to the Uffizi and the man who had the painting was arrested. The man who called himself by the codename Leonard was actually Vincenzo Perugia. He was an Italian who was a low-level employee at the Louvre. The heist was one of the most simplest capers ever carried out. Perugia simply visited the Louvre on the day before on a Sunday, ducked into the storage closet, stayed there overnight, and then walked out the next morning wearing an artist's smock, took the painting off the wall, covered it up, and walked out the door. During his trial, it was determined that he had acted alone and was sentenced to one year and 15 days in prison. After his sentencing, he was reported to have said, it could have been worse. When the painting was announced having been recovered, the media went into overdrive, and this is when the Mona Lisa became the most famous painting in the world. The Italian government agreed to return the painting, but they did so in a very roundabout way, taking the painting to major cities in Italy for exhibition while slowly working their way to France. In each city, tens of thousands of people showed up to see the painting for themselves. On the first day it was returned to the Louvre, over 100,000 people showed up to gaze upon France's return treasure. Since the painting was returned, the Mona Lisa has remained the most famous painting in the world. In 1962 and 1963, the painting was on loan in the United States, where it was valued at over $100 million for insurance purposes, which would be worth $850 million today. With the recent sale of Leonardo's painting Salvador Mundi for $450 million, it is estimated that the Mona Lisa would have a value of over $2.5 billion at auction today. The popularity of the painting is best described by the director of the Louvre, who noted that 80% of the 10 million annual visitors who go to the museum each year go directly to see the Mona Lisa and leave. This is a brand new podcast, and as such, it can really use your support. If you know someone who is curious and you think would like the show, please share it with them. And if you've enjoyed this show, please subscribe on Apple Podcasts or Google Podcasts, where you'll get new content for curious people every day in your podcast player. And leave a five-star review. More reviews can help the show be discovered by more people. And also, please support the show over on Patreon, where you will get exclusive audio content not available in the podcast feed, merchandise such as t-shirts, and you'll be able to submit ideas for future episodes. Until next time, stay curious.